Hello viewers, Super GT here. I jumped onto GT7 recently and I found this. It's the Death Chicane. Yes, the most fearsome corner in Gran Turismo history. But not only that, in a recent update, they added damage. So yes, not only have we got the most difficult corner, but we now have to contend with damage. This is going to make this game a lot more tricky to contend with. Now we jumped into a session here and well I mean I can't quite explain that so I'm going backwards down the pit lane and then as I exit the pit lane he just suddenly appears over there on the track so some sort of paranormal activity taking over Dragon Trail Seaside uh, so quite a lot to contend with here you know the damage the death chicane paranormal activity teleportation you name it it's gonna happen Let's jump into the first race and I decided to not qualify and see where we could we could finish from 15th. Now we've already got our first victim there, we've not even got to the chicane yet and he's already crashed and um, yeah not 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 ideal. Right let's let's go through then and I would argue that um, the chicane is much harder from this direction. This is the reverse version of the track and I'd say it's harder this way around. That's just my personal opinion. It could be completely wrong. Uh, anyway, this this guy here, the Scotman 72, he grazed the wall on the outside of the death chicane, and it it looks like he's got some very light damage and it's slowing him down. Bit of contact there. Now I do apologise for some of the stuttering throughout this race. My uh, capture card having a bit of a frenzied moment. But uh, we're up into P12, it's about to be P11 because someone has grazed, well I say grazed, it, it was quite a hard hit actually. They've had quite a hard hit with Barry R and you know, it happens. This very much was a race of attrition. If you survive, you're probably going to do quite well. And you know, with the added element of damage now, it does change the way that you have to race. And I, I kind of go into the side of this guy, and then I didn't quite... <laughs> Nowhere to go there, and frustrating. I had to slow right down. There's a bit of contact with that VW, and I've got rear bumper damage. I don't think it really slowed me down too much because we are in the slipstream here. We're going to go three abreast down towards the braking zone of turn number one or lap number two. There's contact between the three of us, but I'm on the inside. I've got the line, and I'm going to take P10 there. Thank you very much. As we hurtle now towards the chicane now this was quite a tentative moment because it looked like he was going to go for the inside line and I must say that that was something I would not recommend and thankfully for everyone involved not just me and him but just for everyone at the track they uh, did not witness a death because that could have ended truly horrifically so P10 up behind this guy who's dri uh, driving very slowly Presumably with some sort of damage on his car. And uh, next lap. Oh, a puff of smoke being kicked up. Someone has uh, definitely gone into the wall there. And are we going to overtake them? Looks like we are. The Spaniard there, very slow, into the wall again as we go past. Now, two people here with penalties. Both of them with uh, half second penalties. Not sure for what exactly, but it doesn't really matter to me. We're going to try and overtake them the best we can. Coming up towards the triple chicane here. French person going very slowly. I'm going to try and move around the outside. Are we going to go for it here? Yes, we are. The line opens up. And we're going to slot nicely into P7. Not for long, because as we go over the crest here, into the braking zone of the downhill hairpin, French person says, no, no thank you. I would um, I'd rather like that position back. Thank you very much and he does exactly that and I'm back to P8 although they have a penalty so we're going to try and uh, retake this position uh, as as does the Swede in P6 we're both going to serve it here take a look we're going to go through the Frenchman and tuck into the slipstream of the Swede down the, uh, down the main straight onto the final lap we started P15 can we get the coveted P6, which is basically a race win. We all know that P6 is the best position to finish in. We all know that, right? 
and I've got into P6 and I just have to survive for three quarters of a lap including now the chicane he's going to back out on the outside and we're going to go through there with a decent amount of pace nicely done even with a stutter on the on this on the screen there into the long left this this corner is actually very tricky as you can see a uh, case in point me messing it up big time um, but we run away on the exit with the p6 intact but it wasn't going to last unfortunately because coming down here these curbs are quite tricky and you know in the recent physics update the cars are just a tiny bit more loose i would say and definitely a bit more oversteer i tried to cover the inside may, might have done that a bit late but it got back through anyway and um i surrendered p6 which was just a travesty really just a really awful thing to happen and i'm sure you're all crying your eyes out right now just the fact that i lost that there and uh, yeah it's gonna be a p7 i mean a bit of a shame to lose it on the last lap like that but there you go jumps into qualifying and set a 38.6 which is a semi respectable time before then really trying to push the limits of the chicane and as you can see uh, didn't really succeed so qualifying was actually quite tricky it was quite a hard lap to really string together but that brings us on to race number two now at the start of this one i'm starting p6 and you see it there raise the wall i suppose you know if, if you're going to drive into the wall you have to pay the price and now in gran turismo 7 you're gonna to have to think twice about how hard you want to drive the car obviously you have to push to some extent but you do have to be very mindful of the fact that if you graze the barrier uh, he's going to dish out some damage to you you know you've got to be very careful and on this occasion i've got some engine damage so i'm not able to drive as quickly as i would traditionally like and as a result of all of that i'm going to drop down into p15 which is stone dead last so obviously a very cataclysmic beginning to this race someone into the wall there we're going to go for the move here on the spaniard uh, so 15th back to 13th it's going to have to be one of those comeback races but as i mentioned earlier it's a very much a race of attrition and therefore it's going to try and remain alive for the remainder of the race and that should see us gain a few positions so through the chicane lap number two just taking it a bit more tentatively this time to make sure we preserve our life and I come up behind this Greek driver who was losing speed and then suddenly sped up right as I got to him presumably he must have hit the chicane of death because he's damaged as uh, well that guy that guy met his fate uh, so his damage kind of alleviated at the same moment that I did mine on the first lap if that makes sense which it probably doesn't because I've explained that horribly but anyway I've um, crashed again because I'm just that stupid and it's very difficult that chicane actually when you're right behind another car as uh, we overtake this guy when you're right behind another car one you don't get as much visibility and two you get a tiny bit of aero wash so your car doesn't turn in as quickly as you'd like but uh, at the beginning of lap number four we're up behind the Spaniard here and it's just gonna be a really sad tale here because he truly is gonna meet his maker and boom there he is a hard hit into Barry R and before you know it that's it I mean one little mistake and it's RIP in peace to you good friend but with him out of the picture I moved up into P10 and he actually quit the race there in in a rage someone else into the wall lots of people spinning into that wall actually and this guy quite slow presumably with damage I was back up into P8 and it would ultimately be a P8 and you know i started further forward than that so really that is a disaster but given that i was last at one point i suppose it's not too bad now this one i was hoping to have a bit more luck and i say luck what i actually mean is i should just drive better and stop being so bad uh, so my plan here was really just you know just tweak my aggressiveness down a slight amount just so i can make sure i don't hit the wall and uh, I hit the wall so <laughs> I, I failed pretty much straight away luckily though this time I didn't get engine damage because it was a slightly lighter hit and therefore as you can see by the time the damage ends about now I didn't actually lose a position so I was only really handling damage 
And, you know, it's when you get the engine damage, you just can't drive a car as quickly. Uh, it, it just dies on the straight. There's nothing you can do about that, but with handling, it's not as bad. Uh, this guy gets run wide, called Bob your uncle. And then I move up into P5. Um, with P2 actually not too far away, very much in sight here at the end of lap number two. And then at the end of lap number three, you can see the two guys in front going for a uh, bit of a battle here down in towards turn number one. So one more lap left to go, and I sense that there's an opportunity here to gain one or two positions. So let's see what we can do. Now, of course, coming up into the chicane, I'm not right on the guy in front, so I've got a bit of uh, breathing room here. So, uh, so I could hopefully get some better visibility on the way in. Uh, still, yep, there we go. Get through there just fine. Just playing the long game here. We don't need to rush and overtake. I, I still sense that there's very much an opportunity to get something done. And then there's contact between the pair of them. And am I going to be able to capitalise here on the exit? Kind of, yes. Uh, the guy is on my right-hand side. He's got the inside line for the upcoming corner. There he is, and there's not much I can do. I mean, I could try this one around the outside. It's going to be difficult, so I'm going to slot in back behind once again. But then this is where it all unravels for this duo. As we head through the final part of the triple right, they, well, they both pretty much get a poor exit. Um, it's only good enough for me to go up the inside of them, the uh, P4, and I go way too deep, almost into the back of P3, so I kind of bailed out and made contact with the guy I was overtaking. And it kind of all worked out, thankfully. But then this actually is where it unravels. I was lying earlier. Because coming through here, they both kind of fight each other. And then look at P3. Just going to get tipped into a spin. And then number, uh, this guy now, P3, is going to get a poor run on the exit. And I'm going to say thank you very much for getting aforementioned poor exit. And I'm now going to take over your third position and take a podium. So it all kind of went in my favour on that last lap. It was a bit of a topsy-turvy race. P6 to P3, and I'll take it. Now, a few moments later, I tried to improve my qualifying time once again, and I was kind of stuck in this sort of mid-38 area. I knew that I could do a low 38 if I strung together the lap, but it was a very difficult lap to get right. There's lots of technicalities to this circuit, and, um, of course, the death chicane. This was my best lap, and you can see here, just committing really early to the first bit. There's so much time to be gained through that corner if you get it dead right. I actually got damage from grazing the wall on that lap. Actually, no, that was not my fastest lap, as you can see. Uh, retrying, this was my fastest lap. You can see they're very committed, carrying a lot of speed, a lot of speed through the turn. And uh, that's pretty much how you want to do it. You have to be very brave, very committed. And at least in a time trial, you can keep retrying and eventually get that one lap where you get it dead right. At the end of the lap, this, this kind of downhill corner is very tricky and you do have to get a good exit. And to be fair, I didn't really get the best exit. You can see there, the ghost was slightly quicker, so I probably lost a tenth there compared to the ghost. But it's going to be a 38.5 and um, it was a good job that I did that actually because looking at the grid for the next race, I would have been P8 on the grid without that one-tenth improvement. So it was probably a good job that I, I managed to improve by that much. Starting P5, and from here I, I, I was hoping once again to have an incredible race where we can move forward. It's always the aim to move forward. If you're moving backwards, then something's gone wrong. And obviously if you're reversing your car and going backwards around the track, that's deeply frowned upon. You shouldn't really do that. Um, but anyway, I digress. Let's jump back into this race. Race number four of the video. Starts in P5, four laps to go. Let's do it. Into the chicane. Committing nice and early. Nice and uh, nicely done, actually. You might notice the guy in P3 there. Driving nice and slowly now. And I'm presuming that they would have... Actually, he goes very wide. Presuming they must have grazed the wall and picked up some damage. Now, uh, firmly behind Network Monkey. And we're going to try the inside. It's going to cover it off. Not much I can do. Gonna, can we try this around the outside? Not really. And he's got that one quite wrong. So I'm going to go a bit too deep here. But then suddenly, out of nowhere, Spaniard comes flying back into the picture and gives us a bit of a fright. Here's what happened. 
take a look. Um, so coming through here, I, I think he just kind of forgets to break and just goes, boom. Off we go, guys. Um, just say hi to my friend Barry R on the outside, why don't you? And they gave me rear wing damage and left rear damage. But I was kind of okay with it. It kind of um, sprung me nicely up into P3. By now, there was a two second... <laughs> Actually, there's a... He questions why on earth did that guy do that. It was a bit of a weird move, to be honest. I, you know, it's not like he couldn't see us. There you go. Now, I took the chicane quite nicely here on lap two. It looked like the Belgian in second. Perhaps didn't, because I gained about a second in that section alone. You can see how much closer I am to P2. The leader about three and a half seconds up the road. But we're hunting down P2 right now. As we hurtle up towards the triple chicane, this this is a very technical section of the track, and it's not easy to get dead right. And it's often the case if you get the first bit wrong, you kind of get the next bits wrong. And he's gone very slowly there. Just wondering if they have damage or not. And you have to get a nice good exit here to power yourself over the crest down towards the downhill braking zone. Braking on the 100 ball pretty much almost into the back of him. That could have gone very badly, but it didn't, so we're going to continue. To, uh, towards the final corner of lap number two, and braking pretty much on the end of the kerb on the right-hand side there, and that sees you into this apex quite nicely, and then cutting the corner a tiny bit there. It's very easy to drop a wheel on the exit kerb and spin the car, which is not what you want, really. I actually got quite a poor exit, you see there, uh, the Belgian driver pulling away on the main straight. But it wasn't to matter really too much because you can probably guess what's about to happen. And yes, that's right. This guy is about to meet his fate at the hands of the chicane once more. Another victim. And there it is. The moment it happened. Um, truly, truly sad times. And I'm honestly wiping away tears right now. Seriously, I, I'm deeply distraught about that. Uh, really, really sad to see fellow competitor um, perish like perish like that you know perish in such a horrible way but um, his his crash was to my benefit so I finished P2 so get a load of that mate um, and he, he said in the chat I froze with Super GT behind me so I can only apologize mate but um, that's the end of this video thank you so much for watching and uh, have yourself an amazing day I'll see you next time goodbye <laughs>